Do you wish you could hit the ball long and straight like the PGA professionals? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, we'll show you how to develop the perfect golf swing. It's a classic swing, a classic move. Yeah, and then now watch the belt line. This is the key bit. Look at the extension through. And maintains that spine angle. Nice and high. But the magic move comes from here. Then he just reroutes it. And this is where it starts to look really good. Watch as he starts to pull the handle. Right there, it looks like he's absolutely perfect. Fabulous golf swing with great lines. Yeah, this is just textbook great stuff, isn't it? So watch the club head. Just a little outside the hands. Look there. Arched left wrist at the top of the swing. So watch your belt line. Watch the right knee heading hard and fast towards the left knee. Wow. Goes back on one line, comes back on the same, doesn't it? Throws the arms high. How good is your swing? Look at me. Does it look like her? Or more like them? All it takes is one video. So let's find out what's right and what could be better. So what can we learn from his model swing? You know, is this on plane? Is that on plane? It doesn't really matter because I know where the club head is. I'm never going to have the PGA tour swing, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's effective, it works, and it's And I'll be blunt, I think you've done very well to get down to five with that. And that is an absolute crackerjack. I'll tell you that. what, Mark, it was a good shot, but it wasn't a great swing. Uh, pardon? This is my world now. Does it matter what your golf swing looks like? Obviously, I'm not talking about does it matter in the grand scheme of things. In a world where corrupt politicians and corporations are overseeing the greed-driven destruction of our planet, it would be hard to argue that it really matters that you steepen the shaft a bit in transition. With actual wars going on, one in three people not having access to clean drinking water, and the endless commoditization of our attention spans causing all sorts of mental health issues, it's probably not a massive deal that the club head is a little bit inside your hands at P2. It matters to me. But if we forget all those other things for a minute, even in a golf context, does it matter what your swing looks like? It's an important question because most golfers would like to get better and one of the main ways, if not the main way, that we try to improve, at least in the long game, is by looking at our swings. If you go for a lesson, the majority of coaches will video your swing, show you what is going wrong, maybe compare you to a tour pro and try to help you make a better looking movement. A bit of a problem here is that the distance between the butt of the club and the legs right there, that is getting bigger. You bring just in there, Arms go away, club head goes backwards, mm -hmm. hands here go in, right palm pushes down which gets the toe of the club to work up. Even if you're not seeing a coach, you've normally got some idea of what you think is going wrong in your golf swing and if you haven't, your mates will normally be pretty quick to give you some ideas. You lift your head up. Given the clips at the start of this video, the number of unorthodox swings on tour right now, and the fact that the best player in the world has got a swing that looks like this, you're probably thinking that I'm gonna say that it doesn't matter what your swing looks like. And I've kind of made videos along those lines in the past. No such thing as a perfect golf swing. Nobody in any of the videos that sent in to me said that the key was to perfect your swing. You can do some pretty funky stuff in your swing and still get into a pretty good impact position. But there's a but, and it's a big but. I like big butts and I can't Lie. Because I still can't help thinking that I'd be better at golf if my swing looks like one of these. Great swing. Yeah, they're really nice. I get that the golf ball doesn't care what your swing looks like and that impact is all that counts, but if you watch these two swings, you would know which one scores better. Uh, 
uh, the first one. So does it matter what your swing looks like? I'm not sure. I wish I was because I'm forever finding myself falling down this rabbit hole of watching swings on YouTube or Instagram and wishing that my swing was more like them. And I guess it's because, yeah, part of me thinks that it would make me a better golfer. But then on the other hand, I know that I can hit really good shots and have really good rounds with my swing exactly as it is. Lovely. I like 340, 350. Yeah, yeah, great shot, mate. That yeah. joke of a golf shot. <laughs> I find it really hard to make significant changes to the way that my swing looks even just on the range when I'm like thinking very consciously about those positions. And that makes me think, well, if I'm finding it hard here, what hope have I ever got of taking this to the course and making it feel kind of comfortable and natural there so that I can rely on it under pressure when you've got to hit obviously all sorts of different shots, you've got uneven lies, there's wind, all those kind of things. It just feels like that's never gonna happen. I know there's loads of amazing players with kind of weird swings. Um, a mate of mine got from 12 to two, not with like a really weird swing, but not like completely textbook. And he didn't get at all bogged down in like videoing a swing and trying to make it look better. We played last week and filmed a video um, basically all about how he got so much better. So keep an eye out for that. I also think there's a real danger in getting too bogged down in kind of technical thoughts. All right, remember what I said, huh? Just use your shoulders to push the ball, not your arms. Don't break the wrist and bring that putter back whoa, just whoa, like... You're confusing me. Just let me put the ball in a hole. All right. So there's been times where I've wished that I could forget 99% of everything that I've ever learned about the golf swing and all the different technical videos that I've watched and even some of the lessons that I've had because I wish I could just go back to when I was a kid and used to just swing without really thinking about it. I know that watching all those pure swings has never actually made me any better. And also, I don't know anyone personally, I can't think of anyone who has created a completely different looking swing and that it's actually made them better at golf. Like if you can think of anyone, whether it's a tour pro or just someone you know, let me know. But yeah, I don't, I can't think of anyone I know who's like, wow, your swing looks completely different to before. So my biggest swing flaw, um, based on kind of lessons that I've had in the past, hang on. Yes, basically at the start of my takeaway, my hands tend to come a bit away from my body and I sort of roll the club head in behind. So then the club head is sort of here, sort of flat or under the plane or whatever you want to call it. And then to get to kind of the top of a, what feels like a golf swing, I end up kind of standing up a bit out of posture. And then on the way down, the club is sort of steeper, sort of over the plane um, compared to what it should be. At impact, I'm sort of, yeah, stood up more, shafts more upright. And as a result of that, I'm probably not rotating enough. I'm having to kind of like flip my hands a bit to try and hit it on target. Mess, this is all a, it's a mess. This is a real mess. <laughs> You can tell why I'm not a golf coach, can't you? <laughs> so yeah, those are kind of the problems that have been pointed out to me that I would need to change. My God, that sounds like a lot. Yeah, it does sound like a lot. And it's not that I'm unwilling to change it. It's just that I've tried loads really hard and I just don't seem to be able to stop doing those things. So I either need to find a different way of fixing it and stopping doing those things or accept that they're always gonna be a part of my natural golf swing and just find a way to get better while I'm still doing them. Also, I realized recently while I was watching Swings that um, Freddie Couples does quite a similar little thing to me at the start of his takeaway. The first thing that happens is the club goes way out away from his body. And, you know, he's all right at golf, isn't he? Um, his swings always looked lovely. A lot of people over the years have told me that I've got a really nice swing. Um, but I kind of feel like it's a bit faked. So I always have this vision in my mind of I'm trying to get to a finish position like Rory McIlroy or Adam Scott where the club 
is kind of pointing almost down the line at the target at the end. But yeah, I feel like I'm probably not flexible enough or talented enough to actually get into that position. So I kind of just sort of, yeah, force slash fake it a bit. Um, and Liam kind of spotted that in the lesson that we had a couple of years ago. You're underneath it, you're not rotating, you're adding an off impact yeah. underneath it, flip it, and then try and make it look like you've turned. I don't know, let me know what you think about whether it matters what your swing looks like or not. The reason that I've been thinking about all this is basically I'm trying to work out what sort of path to go down in terms of trying to get better. So whether that's to find like a technical coach who's gonna, you know, get me into different positions to what I normally do, like better positions, um, but that feel quite uncomfortable. And then, like I said before, I've got that feeling of like, well, how would I ever, how is this ever gonna feel natural so that I can take it to the golf course under pressure or do I go down more of the kind of path of like the natural golf swing like the lesson that I had with Danny Burstein a few years ago. The proof is in the shot as opposed to does it look better the ball's doing what it should do now without, without you thinking. That does appeal to me more but then part of me thinks well if it's that easy wouldn't everyone just be doing it um, and maybe it's just because like oh I don't I find it so hard to make those technical changes. I'm just trying to find a way to avoid doing it. Um, but yeah, I do like the feeling of that kind of more natural stuff rather than like feeling like I'm having to force myself into weird positions. Um, so I went to the range earlier this week and I was doing a load of kind of natural golf swing stuff and it just felt so much better and more like relaxing and less sort of effort, I guess, less stress. Um, so yeah, I like the idea of that, but yeah, I just, I guess a part of me feels like, well, if that isn't gonna stop me doing those weird things in my swing, is that gonna stop me from kind of getting to the level that I wanna get to? Um, and then the other thought I had is maybe I need to just forget all about kind of the swing itself and just do kind of like creative practice. So practice hitting like massive hooks and slices and high shots with like, low lofted clubs and you know stingers and all sorts of stuff basically to kind of teach myself the skills so that I can then like find the middle ground when I just want to hit normal shots. Um, I guess more kind of like how you practiced when you were a kid because I was thinking I can't imagine people like Jack Nicklaus and Ben Hogan and Seve were like taking slow motion videos of their swing and comparing it to some bloke on Instagram. And there was no video. When I was 15, 16, I don't even know if there was a, a video around. By the way, I know I've been talking a lot about kind of how to get better. I don't want anyone to think that I'm kind of falling into the old traps that I was in before of getting obsessed with that and therefore not being able to just enjoy golf. This isn't that. Like I'm fully aware that I can play and enjoy golf, whether I'm a, a 10 handicap or scratch or 28 or whatever. Like I know that lower handicaps and enjoyment of golf aren't intrinsically linked, but I just enjoy trying to get better. Um, you know, even kind of having these thoughts and making this video and sort of working out how I'm gonna do it and what sort of path to go down. I enjoy that. Um, and I love that feeling of when you feel like you've made a bit of a breakthrough. So whether it's like, from a lesson or just something you're trying on the range or whatever it is, when you feel like, oh, I've actually found something here. Um, I love kind of how exciting that is. So yeah, that to me is part of the enjoyment of golf. Even though I've decided not to like get obsessed and stressed in terms of must improve every day like I was before, um, equally, I'm not gonna say to myself, I'll oh, forget about trying to improve and you know, forget about like, having lessons or whatever, because yeah, that to me is all part of the enjoyment of it. So I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way in case anyone's thinking, oh, here we go again. I love my swing. Everyone has a unique appearance. Personally, I think it's perfectly okay to find what works for you.